The Lord be with you. Good evening and welcome to the start of the Triduum, the great three days which hold the heart of our faith as Christ followers. We begin this evening, Maundy Thursday, where we will hear the command of our Lord Jesus Christ to love one another. This evening, we will hear some more extended readings from the Gospel of John. I invite you to be immersed in the story as we both hear and experience the events of Jesus' final hours. We will have several times of movement through our service this evening. One will be for the washing of feet um, at the command of our Lord Christ. If you choose to participate in foot washing at the appropriate time, you'll be invited uh, to come back. You may have noticed on your way in the seats there by the Paschal candle, and you'll come and sit down. You can remove your shoes and socks either before or after you get back there. Wash, your feet will be washed and head back to your pews. And, and there's no dismissal by the ushers. Just come back as you feel so led. For individual confession and absolution, or individual absolution, same thing. Come forward as you feel called to do so. You'll kneel to, to have the laying on of hands at that time. Finally, at the end of our service, we will have the powerful moment of the stripping of the altar as we remember Christ's crucifixion and death as Christ was stripped of his power and glory. There, after these elements have been removed from the sanctuary, you will be invited to follow the cross out uh, into the courtyard area where we'll hear our final reading for the evening and be dismissed from there. Actually, there's technically no dismissal. This is a service that continues uh, tomorrow with our Good Friday worship. Um, so we'll depart in silence at the end of this service. I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we begin our Monday Thursday worship. Dear friends in Christ, peace be with you on this holy night. Why do we gather? What is this night? It is a night of love. For on this night, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love each other 
as he loved them. It is a night of communion. For on this night, Jesus gave not only a commandment, but also a sign. Bread and wine, broken and poured, to remember him. It is a night of loving service. For on this night, Jesus gave us not only a commandment, not only a sign, but also an example. On his knees, with basin and towel, washing feet. It is also a night of betrayal. For on this night, a man Jesus loved sold him for money and brought soldiers to seize and bind him as he prayed. This night is joyous, fierce, tender, terrible. We begin in light with memories and stories, friends and feasting. We end in shadows with a queasy fright. We begin as the friends of Jesus did long ago, together as one. We end as they did, scattered in the dark. We begin as they did, singing of love and deliverance. We end as they did, without a single sound. Friends, be at peace on this holy night. Enter it with open hearts. <clears throat> holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel tied around him. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And then Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet, and Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, Peter, you have no share with me. Then Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you, Peter, are clean though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. 
after Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So you see, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, then you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And now I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. On this night, we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Our commitment to this loving service is signified in the washing of feet, following the example our Lord gave us on the night before his death.
and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I've said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. Please rise. The peace of Christ be with you always. We greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace.
I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Beloved, let us celebrate with Jesus at the table of peace. Let us eat the feast with him. And let us love one another well. Praise to you, God of glory. Your love created the universe and sustains it. You breathed life into our dust and placed us in paradise. You found us when we hid ourselves, ashamed of our sin. Your love shaped a people, and you are their God to this day, in an alliance that lasts forever. In the fullness of time, you called us also to be your own through the tender ministry of Jesus. You spoke to us with his human voice and healed us with his human hands. He gave us his life in bread and wine and suffered for his faithfulness on the cross of shame. But you loved him faithfully raising him from the dead. You sent his spirit into our hearts and adopted us, 
making us heirs of his glory. Forever we belong in your household of joy. We remember that he longed to celebrate the Passover with his friends. He arranged for a meal, his last in this life. We remember that he gave them a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. We remember that he gave them an example. He knelt before them and washed their feet. We remember that his betrayer was with him. Jesus loved and served him too. And we remember that on that night, with danger and death in the air, Jesus remembered with joy the deliverance of his ancestors from the oppression of Pharaoh. He told the story, shared the loaf, and drank the cup of blessing. In love for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it. He gave it to them, saying, Take and eat this, all of you. This is my body, broken for you. Do this and remember me. And when the supper was over, he took a cup filled with wine, blessed it in your name, and passed it to them, saying, This is the cup of a new covenant in my blood. Do this and remember me. Holy Spirit, come make all things new. Bless this bread and cup and us who share them. May they be for us life-giving food and drink. Give us love for each other and make us your servants in the world until your new age of justice comes and every creature beholds it. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to say. Friends, if you are hungry for a taste of what is to come, when all creatures, great and small, will feast together without fear in the household of God, if you yearn to feast on a love without condition and without end, if you are thirsting for forgiveness given and received in humility and in joy, then open your hearts to this meal, a sign of grace a gift of peace, the bread of life, the cup of joy, the gifts of God for all God's people. Amen. Please be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us rise and give thanks. Thank you, holy God, for life in the spirit of Jesus, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendor of creation, or for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the fruits of this holy communion, oneness of Christ, one of the neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Christ's name we pray. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying to us, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. They said, what does he mean by this a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, are you discussing among yourselves what I meant when I said, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain, because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. On that day you will ask nothing of me. Very truly, I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed.
After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, for whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him.